Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. It has been more than two years since Mercedes Lasoya's death, but tonight the man convicted of abusing the five year old will spend the rest of his life in prison. Jurors sealed Jose Ruiz's fate about 90 minutes ago after hearing five days of testimony, including that of Mercedes mother and Ruiz's ex girlfriend Katrina Mendoza. Our Erica Hernandez has been following this case since the pair were indicted almost two years ago, and she was in the courtroom as Ruiz heard the verdict and his sentence. The family of Mercedes Lasoya in tears as they walked out of the courtroom this evening and just glad this trial is over and they got justice for Mercedes. Ruiz was sentenced to life in prison for the death of Mercedes Lasoya. It was a long evening, but jurors only took 45 minutes to find him guilty and 15 to sentence him to life. We spoke with Mercedes' great grandmother after the verdict and this is what she had to say. This is an example that we have to believe in the justice, which is not wasn't easy at first, but I do believe in it now and more than ever. And if you ever see any child suffering, do not hesitate to call police or call authorities. Was justice served today? Yes, justice was served, and I'm very, very thankful to, for that. As far as Katrina Mendoza, she is still facing her sentencing date. She took a plea deal. The max she can get is 45 years. There is no date set for that yet. As for Ruiz, he will now be transferred to a Texas prison where he will serve his term. At the Cathedral Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It's tonight, a controversial state immigration law will remain on hold. The United States Supreme Court issuing an indefinite pause on SB 4. That law would allow law enforcement in Texas to arrest people who are merely suspected of entering the country illegally. The pause will stay in place while the court considers emergency appeals from the Biden administration, as well as other groups challenging the law. Meanwhile, we're getting reactions surrounding that Supreme Court decision. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar commenting on SB 4 a little earlier today. I still disagree with with the way this law was was written and put out. Uh, the the federal government, the federal law lays out pretty pretty substantially, pretty clearly that as local law enforcement officers, we don't have the authority uh, to arrest somebody solely for uh, immigration issues. Right? If they break another law, that's something totally different. But just solely based upon immigration issues, the federal law lays out that we're not we don't have the authority to do that. Now, the sheriff did go on to say if SB4 ultimately does go into effect, there's a new policy that's already been drafted that would lay out exactly what authority his deputies would have or not have. And just a little while ago, Governor Greg Abbott posting this on X, formerly known as Twitter, saying, quote, SCOTUS temporarily halted enforcement of SB4, but Texas is still using its authority to arrest illegal immigrants for criminal trespass and other violations of law. We continue building the wall, use NG to erect razor wire barriers to repel migrants and buoys remain in river, end quote. By the way, NG stands for National Guard. Could it change the way we buy and sell houses? Realtors are facing new rules on how they make commissions. It's part of a $418 million settlement against the National Association of Realtors. The 19th's Patty Santos looked into what this could mean for buyers and sellers. Newly proposed changes for realtors stem from a lawsuit surrounding commissions. That commission that they agree to pay me is kind of like the budget that I have to be able to market their home. And I will offer part of that commission to a buyer's agent to bring me a qualified buyer. Number one, compensation for the realtor representing the buyer will no longer be listed on the Multiple Listing Services, or MLS. That's a private database created and maintained by local real estate boards. As a listing agent, you won't be able to say how much compensation you're willing to offer for a buyer's agent. That's something that will have to be negotiated directly between the agents. Change number two, starting in July, before any buyer is shown a home. A representation agreement has to be signed between the selling and buying agents. That is a contract between those two people that says, look, we're working together um, to try, you know, to reach this common goal and work towards your best interests. San Antonio Realtors we spoke with make it clear sellers have always had the right to negotiate the commission they pay. Here in San Antonio, 
uh, we're seeing on average between four to seven percent in commissions, and that varies quite a bit. We asked if these changes will impact home prices. It's not going to impact home pricing at all. Supply and demand is always going to prevail. Both realtors agree it is not clear how these changes may impact veterans buying a home. We just need to polish up how the buyer can pay commission because right now, like I said, VA home buyers are not allowed to pay commission. Sellers don't know that. They don't see that side of it. So how else do they get representation? But if you have questions, reach out to somebody that knows the business, that is experienced in real estate in your local market and get that information for your specific situation. Patty Santos, KSAC 12 News. And another key issue for home sales, perhaps the key to all home sales, interest rates. The Fed meets this week, but no changes are expected for now. Some economists expect a rate cut could happen in June. Interest rates impact a number of products, including mortgages, credit cards, and auto and business loans. Let's talk traffic right now. More construction, a pair of road closures we want to let you know about, and it could make getting around downtown a year-long headache. As of today and for the next year, Alamo Street will be cut down to one way for construction. The northbound lanes of South Alamo between Market and Cesar Chavez will be closed through the completion of this project. Not far away from that closure is another project starting today. All lanes of a small stretch of Santa Rosa near Nueva Street downtown will be closed until the summer. Want more details on all this for your downtown traffic questions, really all your traffic questions. We have you covered on KSAT.com. Just scan this QR code on your screen for an in-depth map of the closures and a breakdown of detours to get around all that. I feel like our whole city is under it construction. Feels like it, right doesn't now. It? it does feel like it, but that also can mean progress. Let's look at it that way. Now, unseasonably cool today and tomorrow. Have the jacket ready to go in the morning, or at least the sweatshirt, even at the bus stop. Will be 45 degrees in San Antonio. As cool as 38 in comfort tomorrow morning. 44 Pleasanton, 40 Rio Medina. 40 Bernie Bulverde in Timberwood Park. So feeling a bit of a chill in the air and we're only going to make it to 61 for the high temperature. I say only because the average is 74. Soon we'll get back above that average. We'll talk about when the warmer air arrives and more importantly, our next chance of rain and how much rain we've seen since our last drought monitor and how much will be taken into account to the next one in just a bit. All right. Thank you, Adam. Well, you probably remember in the spirit of transparency, last year I did increase the budget allocation to enhance building maintenance. All right, you probably remember the cold weather we saw in January and how it forced San Antonio ISD schools to shut down temporarily. Well, now streaming records obtained by KSAT Investigate show district leadership blamed many of the issues on boilers not being set to run around the clock. Superintendent Dr. Jaime Aquino actually told the media that week that human error also contributed to problems at the district. So we're going to take a closer look at who's to blame the district's level of transparency after those cold weather closures and what it took for case head investigates to finally get those records about what went wrong. Watch it now on all of our streaming platforms. A crime cam could lead to doing time cam. He was captured on this doorbell camera this weekend trying to break into a West Side home. Tonight, he walked in front of our cameras after he was arrested. This is who we're talking about. 21 year old Sebastian Beltron. Bear County Sheriff's deputies shared that doorbell video you saw with hopes of finding him. Beltron is now charged with attempted burglary. Deputies believe there's another suspect out there. If you know anything that can help, call the number on your screen. 210-335-6000. She's the victim of a kidnapping who apparently turned the tables on her suspected kidnapper. Gillespie County deputies say she shot and killed that man she, who she had planned to take a weekend trip with. It happened this past Friday. Let me explain. On the phone, the woman told deputies she had been drugged and kidnapped before she shot the man. Deputies eventually found the woman and the vehicle she was in near a winery just east of Fredericksburg. The alleged kidnapper dead in the front seat. Right now, it's unclear if that woman will face any charges. Tonight, the mayor of the city of Progresso arrested on federal drug charges. Progresso, a city in the Rio Grande Valley on our southern border. Special agents with Homeland Security arrested its mayor, 31-year-old Gerardo Alanis. Alanis now charged with four federal drug charges involving cocaine distribution. According to local news station KRGV, the arrest comes after an organized crime and drug enforcement task force investigation 
You can read more about the story right now on our website, ksat.com. Let's go down to your Nightbeat News Flash. Online sales began today for the first over the counter birth control pill approved in the U.S. Some major retail pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens have said they will offer the O pill once they receive shipments. CVS said it expects to have it available later this month. Manufacturer Perigo says when taken as directed, O pill is 98% effective at preventing pregnancy. That's in line with the effectiveness of most birth control pills. Former President Donald Trump having trouble securing a $464 million appeal bond in the fraud judgment against him and his sons. Today, Trump's attorneys told the New York appeals court that getting the bond is a, quote, practical impossibility, end quote. The former president's legal team says they have reached out to 30 underwriters to back a bond, but potential insurers are seeking cash to back the bond, not properties. Trump asking the court to delay posting bond until the appeal of the ruling is over. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. If parts of San Antonio continue to grow, so does the need for health care across our city. UT Health answering that with a state-of-the-art health care facility. Next on the Nightbeat, we're going to talk about the economic impact it is expected to bring. And New Braunfels Police have a brand new tool in their arsenal, what this new vehicle can do and how much it costs. Are you getting cold feet about flying? United Airlines laying out a plan aimed at making customers feel safer about flying. It comes after several incidents like that engine you saw on fire and somebody sliding off the runway. It happened mid-flight on board a Boeing aircraft. In Houston, one Boeing aircraft caught fire. Another aircraft, like I said, slid off the runway. In Medford, Oregon, a plane was found missing a panel on the wing after it landed. Internationally, a Boeing plane left Sydney leaking hydraulic fluid. All of these planes did land safely. United CEO Scott Kirby said today the airline reviewing safety training for all employees and that all of the recent incidents are unrelated. Tonight, Boeing remains under federal investigation. Wonder if it has that new car smell. New Braunfels police are adding a new vehicle to its fleet to keep the community safe when emergencies and disasters happen. City officials and police officers got together this morning at the New Braunfels Police Department headquarters to celebrate this new addition. The new negotiations and tactical command vehicle cost about $700,000, features different technology and cameras. It'll be operated as a command hub for different situations. We have dozens of events throughout the years, or throughout the year, Worst Fest, Wine and Singer Fest, Wassel Fest, just to name a few. Uh, so we're very busy throughout the year with that. Plus, we do have the unexpected events that do come up uh, where there may be some type of hotches or negotiation situation or where SWAT is involved. And this will really give us the tools to, to be at that scene, take command of the scene. It's a pretty cool vehicle. It includes perimeter cameras, an observation area at the top of the vehicle, and spaces workspaces where officers can put their laptop and get to work. A celebration today for a brand new state of the art medical facility in Northwest San Antonio. UT Health's new center on Kyle Seal Parkway, a five story, 108,000 square foot medical community designed with the idea of bringing accessible health care to a growing part of our city. Exceedingly important in our overall expansion plans to better meet the growing health care needs of San Antonio. Whether it be the west side, the south side, the east side, every part of San Antonio, uh, people should not have to travel long distances to have access to health care. By the way, this new facility providing around 130 new jobs is projected to have a $40 million impact in San Antonio every year. All right, let's switch to the weather situation. Want to welcome my friend Adam Kasky back and... Yes. We still need rain. We do. We still need rain and we do have some rain chances coming our way for the middle part of the week, but I'm not too optimistic or too excited about this one. Unfortunately, overall headlines here cooler than average tomorrow and Wednesday back to 80 degrees by Thursday. Then that rain chance comes into the picture Wednesday night into early Thursday, even the shot at a thunderstorm or two. So let's get right into it, looking at these storm chances. And we only have it at 30% for Wednesday night, Wednesday night through sunrise on Thursday morning. So coverage is going to be pretty limited, and I think accumulations will be pretty limited, but we will have some very deceptive clouds leading up to it that'll be fairly gray, looking like it could rain at any moment, but disappointing us in that regard. Here's a look at our drought monitor. 
And then on top of it here, I'm going to go, go, go to put our rainfall since last Wednesday. Notice where we have the worst drought. We've only seen up to about an inch of rain in Bernie, but Pearsall 1.8 inches. Hondo about three quarters of an inch. Hallettsville almost an inch and a half. Pipe Creek just over uh, one inch measured there. Bulverde 1.27. So we've seen some decent accumulations. This will help to put a small little dent in the drought, but obviously we need more and this is the time of year. We need to start ramping up the rainfall production, especially as we get into April and May before the heat of summer and the dry conditions summer often brings sets in. So there's still some time for us and overall the pattern has been favorable with energy and systems coming our way. I do anticipate that to persist for several more weeks. Now, speaking of the pattern that's been favorable, look at parts of Arizona right now in Southern California. Counterclockwise swirl, that's the energy lifting the air, creating those showers there. This upper level disturbance is helping to throw some energy our way from the Pacific, some upper level energy and moisture. And even though it's gonna to track to the north of us, it's gonna get some help from another ripple of energy that's currently over the Pacific that's gonna head our way and help to kickstart some areas of rain Wednesday night. I mentioned the deceptive clouds. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Wednesday, very gray, but not much to show for it. And then Wednesday night as our most recent future cast, the newest run that just came in shows some widely separated or isolated areas of rain, maybe even a brief thunderstorm. And if we do happen to pop a thunderstorm, there's a very low end risk that it could become strong to severe anywhere from Seguin to San Antonio to Hondo to Uvalde and points northward up into the hill country. All right, let's talk temperatures today below average 65 was our high. The average high is 74 and the record for the day 95 set back in 2013. El Paso didn't even hit 60 today. Same with Dallas, a high temperature of 59. Del Rio, only 64 for the high. 64 in Kerrville and New Braunfels topped out at 65. Tomorrow morning, sweatshirt at the bus stop or even a light jacket, 45 Uvalde, 41 Canyon Lake. By tomorrow afternoon, we briefly make it into the lower 60s. Only 60 in Rock Springs. San Antonio, I think about 61 degrees for most of us tomorrow afternoon, a few degrees cooler in parts of the hill country, but notice it's not much warmer on Wednesday, only 64. So keep the jackets around, especially in the morning. And then Thursday, Friday, we're back to 80 degrees and the humidity is not going to get out of control. One indicator of that is look at our morning low temperatures uh, in the 50s for the most part until we get into this time next week and this time next week isolated storm possible. Hey, 21 days until the total solar eclipse and we will be announcing some glasses giveaways in the days and weeks ahead. Here's a look outside with our live cam and we had a lot of clouds early, but now you're actually seeing the stars and actually seen some clearing that will be changing into tomorrow and again some deceptive clouds overhead the next few days. Want to make sure I heard you right. We're giving away eclipse glasses. Yes, we will have several giveaways in Love the it. weeks ahead. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Adam. All right, uh, Larry, if I remember right, uh -huh. wasn't it last year when this team got hot for the conference tournament and we kind of thought maybe they would get a bid last year? Yeah, UTSA women's basketball, yeah. yes. And I think that they clearly remember that vividly from yeah. last season. And you know what, just about a week ago, they suffered a heartbreaking loss in the American semifinals. Well, their postseason hopes are still alive though because UTSA has accepted their WNIT invite. And it was pro day out at both UTSA and Incarnate Word coming up. Seven former UTSA football players and a former Trinity Tiger went through UTSA Pro Day at the race facility this morning. UTSA allowed quarterback Tucker Horn to show off his skills in front of personnel representing 20 NFL teams. Horn and Trinity head football coach Jeremy Urban thanked Coach Trailer and UTSA football and social media for their kindness. San Antonio area football is one big family. Former UTSA wide receiver Joshua Cephas, punter Lucas Dean, and hard-hitting safety Rashad Wisdom were among the road runners on hand looking to increase their NFL draft stock. 
I'd be lying if I would say I'm not tired. But I think it was a great day today, man. I feel good to be back home. Uh, I feel good to be back at the race facility. So, um, you know what I mean? Probably last time doing something as big as this out here, but uh, I feel like it was a good outing, man. And proud of everybody that came out here, just besides myself, you know, everybody else that participated. Man, it was very important. Um, probably one of the, the, the most important days leading up to the job. So, um, you know, I, it, it, it's all on paper now. So, uh, just got to get better. Former UTSA defender and Stevens High School alum Marcus Davenport stopped by to support the Roadrunners. Marcus was drafted 14th overall in the 2018 NFL Draft by the Saints. He spent five seasons there before joining the Vikings in 2023. And last week, he signed a one-year deal with the Detroit Lions. And this afternoon, the Incarnate Word football program held its pro day at Gale and Tom Benson Stadium on the campus of the school. Head coach Clint Killo was there to meet and greet and, of course, support his guys. Many of those NFL personnel drove from UTSA say to UI Dub to see a handful of former Cardinals run through drills, including defensive back Brandon Rashard from San Antonio Christian School. I think I did good, you know what I'm saying? All my drills, they were they were straight. Um, everything was sharp. I had a good on my individual drills and I ran a good 40 and I ran some good uh, 5 10 5 drills. So in the day I, I came out here and I competed and that's what I want to do. Man, it's really it's really uh, dreams turning into reality, man. One step closer to my goal, which is to play professional football. And it was honestly, it felt like a dream today, but you know, now it's reality, like I'm saying, like I said, and it was real, it was real special, especially with the guys, the group of guys that we had today. Seven former UIW football players were there for Pro Day, and they all hope they're one step closer to playing pro football. The 2024 NFL Draft take place in Detroit, Michigan, April 25th through the 27th. In women's college basketball, the UTSA Roadrunners are looking to make some awesome March Madness memories after a disappointing loss in the American Tourney semifinals. Last week, the Roadrunners are now playing the Women's National invitation tournament. The Roadrunners are one of 48 teams in the tourney thanks to an at-large bid. Now this will mark the Roadrunners third postseason tournament and first time back since making the NCAA tournament in 2008 and 2009. I know I'm thinking of 2009. I think I was in like first grade or something. Um, but like I said, it's cool and I'm really glad to be a part of like the uprising in this program. And you know, I feel like this team can really do something, and we have been. It means everything. This is obviously very new to us, um, especially this group of girls playing under Karen, Coach Karen. Um, but it's 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 a good feeling just to be playing late in March and having an opportunity to play for something bigger than ourselves. Well, it's a huge step. Uh, you know, we talk all the time about why you do what you do, and and uh, the biggest reason that you play and you train and all those hours that, you know, starting in June is that you have a chance to experience postseason in some capacity. And, um, you know, I know our players were a bit disappointed in how, how the conference tournament ended, uh, a game that we thought we let get away. And it's been kind of hard to get them, get them out of that doldrum that they were in after that. But I think uh, the excitement of knowing that they earned a chance to play in postseason was a big deal to them. UTSA will host Northern Colorado Thursday night at 6.30 at the Convocation Center in the first round of the WNIT. Victor Wimbanyama loves winning after the break. Last night, the Spurs trailed the Nets by 10 with 6.27 left in the fourth quarter. Then they fought back to win 122 to 115 in overtime to split their two games at the Moody Center in Austin. San Antonio outscored Brooklyn 12 to 5 in overtime to seal the deal. A sweet win for Wimby and his teammates. Um, I love it. You know, I think it's the, um, it's the you know, the moment, the, those moments where we, we progress the, the most, I mean, we, where we get better uh, rather than any other moment in the game. So it's, Really, really enjoyable, but especially when you win. It does feel good to you know close out games and you know uh, you know we we came back from a deficit and uh, we stayed together and you know winning they went into overtime and we still pulled it out. So um, you know, I was happy. I feel like um, it was a really good win. So and the Spurs will look to do it again when they host the Mavericks tomorrow night at seven at the Frosty. Yep, we'll be right back. That's all the time we have for the night beat. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.